Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you enjoy electronics and electronics projects, specifically microcontrollers, stay tuned because we're going to be talking about Arduino. What's Arduino? Well, it's ultimately something like this, you various different sizes of them, a user programmable microprocessor um, and a controller with analog and digital inputs and outputs on it. Um, very similar to some of the uh, sort of PLCs, but on a much smaller format. We have with us today Michael McRoberts, who is the author of the best-selling book, Beginning Arduino. <laughs> Mike, hello, and thank you very much for joining us. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Absolute it's pleasure. Nice uh, what a feat. That must have taken quite a long time to, um, to, to, to put that book together. It did, yeah. It took about a year, um, and that was taken up almost every single spare minute of my spare time literally I, I had a day job so it was coming home from work uh and doing three four hours on the book yeah that went on and on for months and months and months it was a lot of work it, I, I did not at all anticipate just how much work it was going to be at the time because obviously with, with that particular book there's 50 projects in there so you have to make the project first and then obviously get build photographs of the project. You've then got to, you know, get the code and get the screenshots of the code and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then write, you know, each of the chapters around that particular project uh, and trying to explain it. The, the, the whole reason I started the book in the first place is because I was just frustrated at the time with the lack of decent Arduino books. I mean, there's hundreds of them now, but, you know, back then... Um, there wasn't many and the ones that were out were not particularly good you know they they were clearly written by engineers for engineers they, they weren't really written for beginners and, and i just found it really frustrating uh when i was learning and obviously by the time i wrote the book that was several years on of of arduino experience so you know by then i was you know pretty much an expert but at the start it was really really difficult trying to find good tutorials so when you know what when it got to the point where i was competent enough to uh be able to do whatever i wanted with an arduino i thought you know what let's 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 write a book um and it, it kind of led from something else really so i a couple of years after uh doing arduino stuff i ended up running a company called Earthshine electronics which doesn't exist anymore but we we pro just produced arduino starter kits uh, so that was, you know, a complete kit with the Arduino and all of the components. And I also wrote like a little guide uh, in that, which was precursor to the book, if you like. Um, and that went in the box when, you know, when you received your kit so that you knew, you know, what to do and, and how to get started. And, and I, it was similar to the book. It had uh, something like 15 or 20 projects. And it, it's still on the Internet somewhere. Um, and that kind of led into the book and writing the book and, and you know expanding on that idea about uh you know build a project you know here's the project here's the circuit board this is how you build it type this code in that will get it running you can see it running now i will explain how it works so you know get it running first uh and see it all working and go wow that's great but then learn about what you've just done you know learn about the electronics learn about the code and uh get the satisfaction of of of, of the build uh, yeah. but, but and this is the thing actually uh, you know having having looked at your book it is 400 pages just about of or, and it takes you from the very beginning um you know getting started how to plug it in how to uh how to program it um yeah. uh, just doing simple stuff lighting leds and then all the way through to um you know much more complicated projects so mike what was what was your background and how did you get started in electronics uh well i mean my background has got absolutely nothing to do with electronics whatsoever i've, I've not done any training elect in electronics uh, i was interested in electronics as a kid um i was one of those very curious kids very geeky kid who yeah uh, you know was interested in science and um you know physics and biology and all kinds of stuff and uh and computers you know i i had zx81s and spectrums and dragon 32s and things like that when i was a kid and uh my my grandfather he, he actually kind of encouraged all of that 
he he was an electronics engineer and he worked for uh some big companies that were around at the time that produced um laboratory equipment and he would travel travel all the way around the world and do uh, servicing for this laboratory equipment uh, but at home he had his own uh, workshop which was he, everyone called the den and that was that was where he was based <laughs> and and he would build things he would build electronic projects he, he built uh, his, in, his own computer entirely from scratch out of logic gates um, you know all of that kind of stuff so and and he could see that I was interested as well because uh, I used to come in and watch what he was doing, and I was asking a thousand questions. And probably to get rid of me, he he would give me books and things to go off and read. And then he eventually started getting me these, you know, 500 in one uh, electronics kits from Tandy and places like that. Uh, and every single Christmas, every single birthday, I would have a new one of those. So I, I, as a kid, I was always very interested in uh, electronics and science and stuff like that. But then as an adult, that, that I kind of forgot all about that, really. Still obviously interested, but I, I didn't really do anything at all with electronics, apart from tinkering and taking things apart and fixing stuff. Um, it was really 20-odd years ago, I think, I got into astronomy and astrophotography. And um, I, I spent a heck of a lot of money on astrophotography equipment. Uh, and I had a complete computerized setup, which I would typically set up out in the garden but control from inside the house via via a laptop and and you know ethernet cables and stuff and um one of the problems with that I'd, quite often i would want to take images on a work night because it obviously you know in the uk you grab every opportunity you can possibly get <laughs> when it's not get, when it's not cloudy yeah, yeah exactly yeah it doesn't yeah. happen very often so typically yeah. it would normally happen on a work night so you go off and try and set up all your kit before it gets too dark uh, or set it up in the dark. And then, you know, once once you've got it uh, running, you'd basically leave it, you know, because if you're going to take a picture of a, of a you know, a, a galaxy or a nebula or something, you're going to you're going to be taking hundreds and hundreds of pictures uh, over many, many hours, usually. Now, once once it's doing all of that. And it's the night time and you've got work the next day. You do not want to be sitting out there uh, with the kit. And, you know, quite often I did sit out with the kit and, I, you know, I'd, I'd just fall asleep in the chair and stuff like that. But obviously the danger of that is the clouds will come rolling over and then it might start raining or something like that. And that, that will not only ruin your image, but you've got the risk of the rain falling on the equipment. So I was looking around at the time for, um, for cloud sensors and you can buy cloud sensors for astrophotography and astronomy. But at, I don't know how much they are now. I've not looked. But at the time, they were incredibly expensive. They were, they were about, you know, 250, 300 pounds just to sense there was clouds coming over. And I thought, that's ridiculous. Surely there's, there's a better way of, or a cheaper way of doing it. Uh, and I looked around and I came, kind of came to the conclusion that if I was going to get hold of one cheaper, I'd have to build it myself. So I then started looking in, into the theory about how to detect clouds. How, how do you do that? Uh, so I went on all kinds of meteorological uh, forums and all of these amateur uh, meteorolog meteorologists and was trying to look at, you know, how do you detect clouds? And there was all kind of, you know, old school methods of doing that. But I wanted something a bit more, you know, modern and automatic, something that would essentially alert me or set off an alarm or something when the clouds rolled over. And I came across this method that some people were talking about on this forum about using a thermopile, uh, which would be pointing up at the sky, and then another temperature, just a standard temperature sensor, which would just pick up the ambient temperature. And essentially, the whole idea is that you, the thermopile is... Uh, getting the temperature of the clouds and the ambient temperature sensor is obviously just the ambient temperature and the difference between those will tell you if the clouds are coming in or not when it's clear it's it's blatantly obvious that it's clear and then as the, the clouds slowly start to roll across the the temperature of the sky would then start dropping towards the ambient temperature so that's the theory so i then was uh thinking okay so if i get hold of these electronic components i can build one of these devices but my next challenge is i now need to somehow connect those devices to 
a laptop or something that would, you know, or something that would give me some kind of a, an alert or something like that. Um, so how do I do that? So I, I started looking around on the Internet about all of the you know, possible ways of hooking up circuits to computers. And, and there was lots of options around at the time. Uh, and obviously, there was the PIC chips and stuff like that, that people were quite uh, uh, using quite a lot for these kind of projects. But then I came across Arduino, which at the time, I, I'm not sure how long Arduino had been out back then. We're talking about 2008, I think, 2009. I, I, could, I could see all of these great projects that people were doing with Arduinos. And I just liked the look of it. I just liked, you know, I, I read up about how to use it and the and the code and and you know C code. I've never I'd never programmed in C before at the time, uh, but it looked quite sensible to me. I'd programmed in BASIC and you know Pascal and, and COBOL and things like that in the past, but n not C. And, and to me, it just made sense. So uh, so I, I just decided to go and buy an Arduino Uno. Uh, I mean, at the time, you could only really buy, I think it was an, an Uno or a Mega. Uh, there, there were only the 8-bit chips. There's all kinds of 32-bit ARM chips that you can get now with the Arduino stuff. Uh, and then the thermopile and then the temperature sensor. I got, I, I got a digital temperature, temperature sensor, breadboards, all the other bits and pieces I needed. Um, and literally from knowing nothing, within one week, I had a working cloud sensor. Yeah. Uh, and I also built an interface for it using processing. I don't know whether you heard of processing, the processing language. It's a programming language really for visual artists. I use this processing thing to make an interface for my for my cloud sensor um, that would that would you know enable me to get a graphs of the the changing cloud cover and the temperatures and all of that kind of thing. And I was just absolutely amazed that, you know, somebody who had never touched this kind of stuff before, had never really done electronics properly, apart from as a, when, as a kid, and who'd never programmed in C before, that literally within the space of a week or so, I'd, I'd knocked up this fully working cloud sensor. And instead of it being 250, 300 quid, whatever the commercial projects were, it was, you know, uh, whatever it was at the time 20 20, 20 30 quid, quid yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah 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 so yes that's how i that's how i got started uh in arduino and that's uh, that's what kicked it all off really and it just <laughs> it's gone nuts since then <laughs> you're also involved in something called makerspace um uh, medway makers yeah medway makers what is a makerspace what is a, a hack space what's a uh, makerspace or a hack space is essentially a place where you can go and make things using tools that you would not normally have. So, you know, makerspaces and hackspaces are full of 3D printers and laser cutters and CNC machines and, and all kinds of gizmos and gadgets. Um, and they give you the access to this kind of stuff. They've, you know, they've, they've even got workshops for, you know, with lathes and woodworking equipment and all kinds of stuff and, and you know, Places like London Hackspace have also got biology labs and oh, all wow. kinds of amazing things. So depending on what your interests are, you can go to somewhere like that. And, you know, if you've not got room at home or, or the money to go and buy your own CNC machines and laser cutters and things like this, uh, then, you know, you can go and pay a, a, a relatively small subscription fee to join a makerspace and... Um, and get access to these tools. So, I mean, London Hackspace is huge. Is you know, God knows how many thousand members that they've got, um, and the building they're in now is across two or three floors. I think that, that it's absolutely massive place. Whereas now I've I've moved further out into Kent, and I'm now uh, running Medway Makers. So we're quite tiny. And we don't have a dedicated space. So at the moment, we're just meeting up in people's houses, usually my house. Um, and then uh, we've actually got a meeting tomorrow. So ev everyone will turn up and they'll, they'll bring their laptops and, the, and the, you know, their, their Arduinos and their Raspberry Pis and whatever it is they're going to be working on. Um, I set up a load of tables and things like that. You know, I, I've got 3D printers that people can use if they want to, and I've got all kinds of tools and stuff like that that you know, pe people are quite, uh, you know, that they can use if they if they want to. People sometimes bring their own 3D printers and things like that as well. Um, but it's really just a, 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 you know, a time for geeky people to get together and do uh, 
electronics or coding or whatever i mean we've we've done all kinds of stuff in the past not just electronic based things you know we've we've made terrariums we've made kites uh, all kinds of things like that so it's yeah you know a, a makerspace in general is just somewhere to go and and do crafty things or makery type things uh, and not necessarily electronics as well you know a lot of them do knitting and and uh, sewing and all kinds of things like that as well but it sounds uh, like it. A, a good place to 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 learn from each other um so you, uh, you know you can go there and, and 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 say i really wanted to create this but i'm not sure how to go about it yeah and someone's gonna say well maybe if you tried this uh exactly and i've got a good example of that so that there, there's a guy who's one of our members who's he's a guy called demi and he joined us about five years ago i think it was and when he when he came along, he he'd had experience with coding, but had never done anything with Arduinos or Raspberry Pis before. Never had never even heard of them. And he came to the meeting, and I can't remember how the conversation started, but he was we were chatting about things and ideas for stuff. Uh, and he was telling us about oh, I'd, you know, we'd, he'd seen these YouTube videos of people building their own CNC machines, and he said he'd love to be able to do something like that, but it's completely out of his you know, out of a skill set. And I just said, no, no, do it. Go for it, mate. Go and buy the bits and bobs. Yeah, we'll help you. Um, and he did. And he started off, he actually, I think he started off with my book, actually. I gave him a copy of my book and said, start off with that, learn the basics. Uh, and before you know it, you, you'll be controlling stepper motors and things like that. And, and you'll be able to make your own CNC machine. Uh, and lo and behold, he did. He went and built quite a big one as well. He didn't even start off small. He built a <laughs> giant CNC <laughs> machine in his garage. Fantastic. Um, and that has actually led on to him purchasing a commercial CNC machine, this massive beast of a thing. It's about the size of a car. Uh, and he's now running his own CNC business. And that's oh, all fantastic. off you know, what he learned at, at Medway Makers. So Fantastic. Well, I think that actually sort of takes us very nicely into um, into into your book. Um, so as, a, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm, I'm just sort of having a quick look at the, at, the, at the table of contents here of your book. But ultimately, um, your, your book takes us through how to plug the USB cables into your computer, yeah. all the way to the you know uh, um, uh, how how to set up, how to install and set up the the yeah. the, the, exactly. the, 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 the Arduino. Idea, the whole idea, right from the start, from the book, was to presume you you knew nothing about electronics and you knew nothing about coding. You'd never done that before, and just presume that and take you through it step by step as if you were an absolute one hundred percent complete beginner. Not only do you do that, but you then get into you know various different projects in the book. Um, so uh, the, the first thing probably most people will do is light an LED or perhaps uh, make a buzzer uh, 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 go off or something along those yeah. lines. Uh, but you you, t you take the, the 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 book through um, LCD displays, um, how to drive uh, PWM servos, uh, stepper motors, um, pressure sensors, touch touch screens, uh, the temperature sensors ultrasonic range finders um yeah. uh, even reading and writing uh, rfids uh, and something like this guy here which i think is the uh, which is the nano um mm -hmm. so i think the, the the nano is probably about five quid i think the lcd display is about three or four quid yeah. uh and, and you know it, it depends on what you want to attach to it but but you know it's, it's not a lot of money to get into to get into <coughs> the in, in, into something that's so versatile um um, and something that gives you the ability to be able to to, to do so many things. Anyway, the, the the point I guess I I really wanted to sort of like show um, to to the people that watch this channel was uh, there is a fantastic book out there uh, which has been written by Mike um, and and as you heard earlier it's it's taken him it, it it's been sort of like the love of a, a year's worth of hard work. Uh, um, uh, Honestly, yeah. it's a fantastic, and then, and, then, and then about another year to rewrite it again. To rewrite <laughs> it again because it's it's now in edition two, but it's absolutely fantastic. It's well worth checking out. Um, if if it's something that interests you, this is this is a book that's absolutely well worth having. So, Mike, just just a quickie. So, what does the future hold? Where where are we? Where are we? You know, you've, you obviously you've created this fantastic book on on the Arduino. Uh, what does the future hold? More books? Where where are we going? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I'll have to think about that. I, I mean, I've I've got a new Udemy course which is based on the book, uh, 
which is selling reasonably well. What's an uh, Udemy? I'm sorry. So Udemy, U D E M Y, or it might be Udemy. I'm not sure. It's it's online learning. So th there's a course on there, the Complete Beginner's Guide to the Arduino, which is it's okay. ba it's entirely based on the book. Okay. Uh, but it's all in video lessons, video lectures. Um, so that's one thing I've done, and, and uh, the same course is also on Pact uh, and somewhere else. I can't remember where the third one is. Um, as for further books, possibly, possibly. I haven't given it a great deal of thought. Uh, certainly, at the beginning, the Arduino book could probably do with, with an update because mm -hmm. you know, fairly recently uh, the Arduino team have brought out a brand-new IDE. Uh, there's, there's a lot more boards available now. Yeah. Um, so... You know, it, it could probably do with a third edition, or perhaps you know, a, a, another book entirely, which goes a bit into a bit more depth. Perhaps I'm not sure. Yeah. Are you doing any technical authoring for? Are you doing any? Um... I'm doing technical editing at the moment. Technical yeah. editing. I, I'm mm -hmm. actually right now doing one for a guy who's writing a book about picks, the 32-bit pick. Oh right. Well, those uh, are, those are, those have totally changed. I remember um, back in the day, I was uh, was it the 12 C509s and the 12 C508s and stuff like that. You know, they were they were one time only uh, picks. You would blow them once, and 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 you know, as soon as the code was on there, that was that that was that. You know, you, yeah. you wouldn't get a, you wouldn't get a second chance. But um, I'm, I'm amazed they're still going. Personally, considering the the popularity of the arduino you thought they would have vanished but just they're not they're been still, destroyed yeah they're still uh, they're still going quite strong yeah, they're still well, it's, it's quite a the, niche market is, but there's a lot of people using them this is the other thing is the arduino itself actually um you, you don't necessarily need to have the, the 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 dev board for the arduino you can basically put an arduino chip on your own PCB. So if you if you design and, yep. and manufacture your own PCB that's bespoke to do a, a, a bespoke job, you can stuff an Arduino on there. Mm. Um, and and that, yeah, that's, that's relatively simple simple to do. I, I certainly remember in the early days when the the Atmel chip that was on the Arduino it was a, a through hole chip. So you know, obviously, nice big chunky chip. You could quite easily just pop it off. And stick it in your own circuit board, and I, I quite often do that, and then just put a fresh one in and, and flash the bootloader. Uh, but now with you know SMD chips, you, you you know again that kind of thing is relatively simple for hobbyists now. Uh, making your own circuit boards and, and soldering and soldering ovens and stuff like that uh, using SMD components. So yeah. <laughs> With a PCP way, or probably make you ten PCBs of whatever you've decided to to do with you know for yeah for 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 not very much money as well. Yeah. I, I mean, I've you know I've got out the ferric chloride before now and etched a number of PCBs either using the permanent marker to write it onto the onto the board or or overlay you know and uh, yeah. uh, and all that kind of stuff. But no, I think it's a lot easier nowadays, like you say. But there's so many PCB companies out there now that just for a couple of quid, you can produce a handful of, you know, uh, your own printed circuit boards professionally made. And all of the great tools that are out there for producing PCBs and circuit designs as well. What's your favourite uh, What's your favorite PCB design package? Easy, is it Easy PCB or something along those lines? Or? Uh, I used to use EagleCAD. Uh, okay. I've not done it for a while. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, EagleCAD was the one that I used to use. Uh, but there's there's hundreds of them out there now, uh, and a lot of them are all open source and free. It's a lot easier now to make things um, and do stuff which, in the past, would have you know you'd, you'd have to spend a lot of money on or get a company to do for you. <laughs> you can do it all from your house now. It's just a, it's just a lot easier now for people to you know, at home manufacture things. Uh, you know, and particularly with 3D printers as well, you know, just make your own plastic components or metal components even nowadays. It's, it's, it's amazing what, what you can do with technology. So I just wanted to share with you the fact that Mike has put together a fantastic book uh, um, and, and, and it's about beginning, and it's not just beginning Arduino, it takes you from how to how to plug it in, how to program it, how to connect things to it, the whole lot. Um, so Mike, thank you so much, very much for putting all of that time and effort into creating that book. If you're interested in the book, then please do check out the book. Obviously, the, there'll be a, a link in the, uh, in the description. But honestly, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for taking time out to, to to, to chat with us and share your experiences with us today. 
Thank you very much. It's, it's been great. It's, uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. I think we're kindred spirits. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Bye for now. Right. Cheers. Bye.